Hello everyone, this is Robert, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Sweepy, which is a dust shoe made by Carbide 3D. Um, this video is not sponsored in any way. I bought this with my very own money. If you don't believe me, then, well, you might have trust issues in your life. Something to think about. Uh, this is a two-part magnetic dust shoe that comes in a few different sizes. Um, one of the sizes is 80 millimeters, which fits my spindle, or theoretically fits my spindle. And I think it also comes in like a 63 or 69, something like that. Check the description down below. I'm looking for a better solution, so let's see if this will work out for me. First off, let's take a closer look at it, and then we'll hook it up on the machine. So here is a better look at the Sweepy, which is a bit of an adorable name, so, you know, point for that. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with what a dust shoe is, basically your spindle fits right there, and then your dust collection sits right there, and then this comes off the bottom so that you can change bits and do whatever you need to do. And then that just snaps back on top. So this is an 80 millimeter. Um, it does have this little um, cam lock right here, which um, is used to close down onto the spindle. Looking at it, I can see that it has almost no travel whatsoever. It moves in about that much. So we'll see if that becomes a problem. Um, this mechanism does seem decent, although this is a little thin right here. So I don't know, maybe that could snap. We will see. Um, over here is the dust collection port. They only have this in the one variety for my spindle. So I think this is a two and a half, but inside diameter is two and a quarter. So if you have like a shop vac hose, that is what is designed to fit inside of that. I'm going to have to adapt that. That's okay. The top and bottom halves are held in place by these six magnets. And I will say it's pretty weak. Um, I'm not really going to do the magnet calculations to find out what grade of magnets these are, but so far I'm pretty unimpressed by the holding power of the magnets. Um, I might test that later. Um, I don't think that's really a big deal, but this can get knocked off pretty easily. So I don't know if you don't have your fixturing just right and you just come across and knock into it, it will come off and most likely ruin itself. So that might be a little bit of an issue. Um, other little features to talk about, um, has a little fringes on here. I'm not really going to talk about the depth or anything yet. We're just going to have to get that on the machine, but these are relatively short. Um, I want to say, yeah, maybe about an inch, something like that, um, which is about a third of the height of the ones that I currently have. And that's an issue if you're, you know, doing a lot of Z travel. Uh, let's see what else to talk about. This is clear plastic, which is nice. And this is pretty much the main reason why I bought this is it's clear. So for filming, it will help out a lot because you guys can actually see what's going on when I'm doing machining. And also I can look inside and see what's happening. So um, let's uh, fit this up on the machine and see how it looks on the spindle. This is a set of telescoping gauges. They are used to measure the inside diameter of something like this dust shoe. So you just kind of press these down, they're spring loaded like that, and then you just kind of um, you know, put them against what you're measuring. And then we're just gonna tighten that up. And now you can lift this out, and then you simply just measure that distance. And there we go, 80.2. So this fully tightened in its most closed position is just over 80 millimeters, which is pretty cool. Uh, my spindle is just a tad under 80 millimeters, so that's why this has wobble. Now, little teaching moment here. If you're gonna be designing a clamping mechanism that can clamp against a known diameter, you'd think you'd want it to bottom out at slightly under that diameter. The fact that this bottoms out right at 80, not too thrilled about that. That's some um, uh, poor engineering right there. So 
So with a little bit of tape, um, it's on there pretty good. And honestly, the shim tape was just really thin, so I probably just should have used the duct tape to begin with, but wow, it is really windy outside. Um, so yeah, it's, it's on there really good. The clamp mechanism is nice and it's held, you know, as good as I could expect it to be held. So there's that now. Okay, let, let's measure this. Um, I know that maybe the breakaway feature is actually probably more of a feature than anything, but I just kind of want to give you an idea of just how easy this comes off. So uh, let's figure out how easily it does come off. So just in case you were wondering how petty I'm going to be about the magnet force on this, I have this little um, gauge hooked up. It's just basically a luggage scale, and as you um, apply force down here, it will show up. So let's just pull this off. 0.8 pounds. Let's do it, do it one more time. Let's zero this out. 0.75. So yeah. Now, granted, we have the weight of this pulling on it as well. This is, I don't know, a quarter pound, something like that. So we're right about a pound worth of force is what it takes to pull this off, which really isn't much. I mean, you can just kind of bump against this and it will fall off. And I did verify these readings. I do have a calibrated weight set. I added weights onto here and sure enough, it just comes right off with about a pound. So I think this might be a feature to where, you know, it's meant to just kind of fall off, but it's on there just enough. I'm probably going to end up using little um, spring clamps to hold it in place um, because it, I think even just with fast rapids on the machine, it might want to come off. So not too thrilled with the weak magnets on here. So now all that's left to do is connect this to my port. This is sized, as I said, for a two and a quarter. If you have a um, shop vac or something like that, it fits in there just fine. I use four inch tubing on everything. So I 3D printed this little adapter that goes from the four inch down to the two. And just because this is a test, I actually ended up having to use a little bit of duct tape just so it fits in there nice and snug which it does. This is not a fault of the dust shoe at all. This is just, I need to tweak the settings a little bit, but it fits in there nice. So let's do some test cuts and see how well it does. So let's, let's have a look. Not bad, just a tiny, tiny bit of debris. And if we look at this, yeah, there's really nothing in here. So yeah, it definitely did the job and that's you know not surprising. Um, also this very small path right here. Um, I have a three horsepower dust collector that starts out as a seven, move it down to a six, then to a four, then to a two. It probably has a good amount of suction. How much suction? Let's see. So I'm not actually measuring suction, but rather CFM or just basic airflow, how much air is flowing through this. And I'm just kind of curious, just so I know, you know, how restrictive this is, things like that. So I'm gonna turn on this meter. Um, I've got it set to the cross-sectional area of this, which is two and a half inches. And then whatever that is, it's 0.034 um, square feet. I'm gonna set this to max, and then we're gonna turn this on. Ninety-four. That's really, really low. Um, let's try it here. Um, I'm just going to assume that that's the same cross-sectional area. So that was 185. 
So that's actually got a lot more airflow. So this is quite restrictive and that's not terribly surprising, but yeah. And just as a final test, I wanna measure just coming out of the four inch hose. Now keep in mind, all of these things are relative. I have this adjusted, so it is the cross-sectional area. So this is adjusted for the much larger size. So let's do max. So 900 CFM, then it goes into this restrictor that goes down to 200, which there is a reason behind that is I'm not able to fully get this around, you know, it's just, that's gonna be some issue. So there is that, but this is also further restricting. So that's um, kind of interesting to know. I'm getting a ton of suction out of this, but then when it goes into this whole assembly, it is dropping off dramatically. So. Yeah, that is what it is, I guess. So I guess I learned something today. Size does in fact matter. Well, at least in terms of maintaining your airflow. This is just way too small and too restrictive for a traditional dust collection setup. A shop vac or something like that relies a lot more heavily on suction rather than ultimate airflow. So a big system like I have, I have an Oneida V3000 Cyclone thing. And obviously you can see at the four inch hose, which is already reduced from the six inch and runs through all sorts of tubing and stuff. That was what, 900 CFM, something like that. And then when we get to this, it's only about 100 CFM. So that is a drastic reduction. I did test this one off camera. This is my current dust shoe that I've been using. And this one was a little over 300 CFM and it's kind of lossy down here. So it is actually kind of hard to measure. It's probably higher than that, but let's just call it 300. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, something like this is just gonna be better because it's just bigger. So I think the um, airflow path on this is just way too small for an actual dust collection system. And that's kind of the point of the thing is for dust collection. I also noticed there is significant um, dust all around the magnets and stuff. I don't think this performs a perfect seal, which Okay, I guess that's fine. Um, so yeah, this is just probably not gonna be viable for a router like I have. For a smaller system that you're gonna use a shop vac into it, that's probably perfectly fine. So yeah, I did learn that today. I'm gonna be sticking with this guy. Um, for anyone that's interested, I did get this just off, off of eBay. I think it was like $25, $30, something like that. And um, it does work relatively well. This slides apart and I even put a hole inside of it right there for my fog buster. So I think for my purposes, this is going to continue to work. I was just really hoping that this would work because I like the magnets and I liked the clear see-through port. But as you saw, all it really does is give you a good view of the collet and that's about it. So yeah, unfortunately not going to be using this guy. So if you're still watching at this point in the video, I would like to point out that this is the only, the only dust collection or dust shoe video on the internet that hasn't used some stupid pun about a product sucking. So just wanted to throw that out there. I've been researching dust collecting for the last year. Every single video has that same stupid joke. So didn't have it in here. Um, that is my review of the Brushy 80. I'm still going to be on the lookout for my favorite dust shoe. I'm probably going to end up building my own. Um, I've seen the one that's on the Avid CNC users group with the um, two columns up the side and it's fine. My biggest issue with it is it doesn't really have an accommodation for a fog buster or any kind of coolant in it, which is going to be admittedly pretty rare. Um, but the other issue I have with it is it does kind of go to the double and then back down to one, which is a little cumbersome. And also it takes up both sides of the spindle. That's where I have my fog buster and also mounting an indicator, also tramming your um, spindle, all those things that kind of um, complicate. So anyway, still on the lookout, might just end up making my own. As always, thanks for watching. Check me out on Facebook and see you in the next video.